Andrew Scheer's new deputy leader has found herself mired in controversy just days after being named to the job. Leona Alislev is now apologizing for a comment she made on CBC Radio's The House about Scheer being the only federal leader who has not marched in a pride parade anywhere. That's obviously his choice, and we live in a country where that's his choice. Have we asked anybody if they match, marched in a St. Patrick's Day parade? Alice Love was fiercely criticized on social media for her choice of comparison. She took to Twitter to apologize for the comment, saying, I have always stood unequivocally in support of LGBTQ rights and will continue to do so in my role as deputy leader and as parliamentarian. I did not intend to make erroneous and hurtful comparisons. I apologize unreservedly, end quote. Well, for more on the story, we're joined by Kate Harrison in Ottawa. She's a conservative strategist and vice president of Summa Strategies Canada, a public affairs firm. Kate, thanks for, well, so much for joining us early on a weekend like this. Let's talk good about... Good to be here, John. Good to have you. Let's talk about Alice Love's apology. What do you make of it? Uh, well, I think she was right to apologize and appreciate the uh, the speed with which she did so. Uh, I do ultimately believe that, that she likely misspoke. Obviously, she herself has a history of attending uh, Pride events, so I don't actually think that uh, she understood the consequence of, of what she said and when she had some time to reflect, uh, did the right thing in apologizing. But what I do think uh, the, the comments themselves speak to is an inconsistency in messaging uh, that's happening right now within the Conservatives on answering these types of questions. Uh, and that's really been the killer for, for Andrew Scheer and the team. We've heard that, you know, uh, this is just a matter of marching in any number of events. Uh, you know, we've heard that it's anti-Catholic bigotry. Uh, we've heard that, you know, it's just a matter of preference and that ultimately the leader supports, uh, you know, equal rights for everybody. Uh, all of these things kind of create a perfect storm of an inconsistent message. So I think what's really going to be key for, for Andrew Scheer and his team uh, is making sure that they are singing from the same song sheet. Uh, but that has to be done in a way that is authentic and, and true to, to what Andrew Scheer actually believes. Otherwise, it's just going to appear, uh, as it has been, uh, that they're trying to skate around this question. Speaking of authentic and true, though, uh she had been criticized uh, almost immediately after being given the job as deputy party leader. Former uh, liberal, was she the one uh, to uh, lead the party forward like that under his leadership? What do you think of her choice in the first place? Uh, you know, I appreciate uh, the, the signal that was being made uh, by, by Andrew Shear and the team in appointing her. Uh, she is a very qualified individual. She's obviously a woman from the GTA uh, and the 905, which, you know, writ large is, is where many conservatives agree we need to grow. Uh, I think that there is a concern, of course, that there has been a number of MPs that have a longer history in the party uh, and have proven their bona fides and that they may have deserved a chance as well. So I, I do see both sides of it. Um, I think that her position as, as deputy leader may not have been questioned if perhaps other faces have changed on the leadership team. So there was ways to uh, to go about this. Uh, but I do think that, uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the signal that was being sent by her initial appointment has been uh, has been kind of trampled on because of uh, the, the initial round of interviews that, uh, that she had given that inconsistent message. You heard of the need for the party to expand. You mentioned the need, rather, of the party to expand the GTA uh, and presumably uh, Quebec as well. Uh, and yet, at the UCP uh, gathering on Friday, Andrew Scheer effectively doubled down on his uh, maybe further to the right bona fide, saying that uh, there was a, a push for two liberal parties, uh, kind of making the sense that uh, he was going to stake his, uh, his, uh, his claim to the right of the spectrum. Uh, do you think he has to shift at all? Well, I think, you know, he's, it would be a mistake to uh, liken support for same-sex marriage uh, with some type of a liberal policy. I don't think that the liberals should own same-sex marriage uh, and questions on, on pro-life and pro-choice. So um, if that's the equivalency that's being made, I think that that's not a very good place uh, to start from. Uh, we've also seen that conservatives and conservative policies can win in Ontario. We saw it with Stephen Harper. Uh, we saw it most recently with Doug Ford. So uh, I don't think that uh, dismissing some of the concerns that have been raised uh, as liberal light uh, is going to be an effective strategy uh, for Mr. Scheer. Uh, I do think that uh, he's going to have to answer questions on social values uh, with a degree of, of honesty and conviction uh, as opposed to the kind of myriad of messages that we've heard so far. Um, but, but certainly uh, taking the route of kind of dismissing those concerns as disgruntled party uh, disgruntled party people or, you know, your Toronto consultants or your Toronto elite, which are apparently the group that you're also trying to court for the next election, uh, that's not a great strategy. Uh, we have heard those... Uh 
people from Toronto and elsewhere uh, calling for him to step down, not to wait until April. Step down, maybe run again, but step down nonetheless. Do you think that Andrew Scheer should step down? I think that it's premature to make that call, to be honest. I think that there's a lot of Conservatives that are waiting uh, to see what the uh, external review that John Barrett is, is completing has to say. Um, I also think that Andrew Scheer deserves a little bit of time to show that he's, uh, he's listening, he's been on the road, uh, speaking with party members, uh, talking to them and seeing uh, what they felt went wrong, what they thought went right. Uh, what I do think ultimately, and I think a lot of Conservatives are agreed on this point, is that the choice should be up to party members. Uh, so uh, on the one hand, there's there's a need to get a uh, hold on this before April so that way uh, we don't spend the next five months kind of finding this out in public. Uh, but on the other, it, it should be a call for the members to make on whether or not he should continue to stay. So the key for him is going to be um, getting a, a handle on, on kind of the party, the questions that are being asked and, and being able to account for those in, in short order. I think he's probably got until uh, the Christmas break to, to really figure it out and determine for people or make it clear to people that, that he should be staying on.